Fuck the children! Welcome back guys! We are going to look at another Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 park of mine. It's brand new, and I'm not sure why I didn't think of the idea years ago. It's genius! This park you're about to see is dedicated to my favorite comedian of all time, George Dennis Patrick Carlin. Thank you! Thank you! Why? 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 Why is it that most of the people who are against abortion are people you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place, huh? I just noticed that there was a guy right over here in the in menu sequence, just staying on the water. I'm not sure how that happened, but... Jesus said, suffer the little children, come unto me. Anyway, let's get started. It is right here. We're going to go to George Carlin Land. It is located in New York State, just outside of New York City, where he was born and he grew up. So let's take a look. Here you go. It's based on the build your own Six Flags Park scenario, which I played a lot as a very little kid. Either build rides from other Six Flags parks, but I'm like, why would you want to do that? That's, that's so unoriginal. But then I realized when I got older, wait, that's what Six Flags does. Well, this is not a Six Flags park. Or so we've been told. No, it, it's not. But not for long! Anyway, this is what it looks like when you walk into the park. And this part right here, I sort of stole from a channel called Zach's Workshop in his series where he builds a Six Flags park. Just this bit. The buildings are my own original idea. There are sections of the park, too. This area is basically called Back in Town, which shares a name with one of his show collections. And there's a carousel right in the middle called Medieval Bullshit. I'm Trevor. They're going to break me up next week. What kind of medieval bullshit is that, said Edward. Not that I think you would have a problem with carousels, but uh, whatever. It, it's funny. George Carlin was a very funny man, but even more than that, he was a philosopher. He could just tell what's about to happen to this country. And he also explained so in his three books, Jesus Brings the Pork Chops, Brain Droppings, and Napalm and Silly Putty. So there are different directions we could go to. We'll start left. This is supposed to be the oldest coaster park, a PTC wooden coaster called Old Fuck for George Carlin. Fuck is actually a synonym for a person. Don't, it's alright, he calls himself an old fuck. Uh, that's alright, you can say that. So everyone uh, could be called a fuck. For example, old fuck, fat fuck, skinny fuck, tall fuck, short fuck. Uh, I am a roller coaster fuck. The handyman there is the cleaner fuck. And I found that kind of funny. Now, it doesn't look very old. It's supposed to be a very old PTC wooden coaster from the 40. They're anti-rollback systems there. Actually, they are there just to add more block zones to the coaster so it doesn't stop on the lift till every time. For those of you who are unfamiliar, a block zone is a section of a ride that only one train- Right here is supposed uh, to be themed to New York City, uh, specifically Manhattan. Well, not very well, of course. What continent is this? Manhattan. And every single ride and food stall is a theme to something that George Carlin has said or done. Every single one. I'm not going to show all of them because otherwise this video would be an hour and a half long. But basically, New York style pizza, New York style bagels. One time he talked about how if a food advertiser puts style in the title of the food, it just means it's not from there. Anytime they add the word style to another word, someone is pulling your prick. <laughs> Old style goodness. What does that mean? Nothing. It means nothing. New York style deli. It means it's not located in New York. 
That's all it means, or they wouldn't have to say it in the first place. It's located in Calgary, and the owner is from Hong Kong. This is a very good pre-built log food design I call raw sewage. When I was a little boy in New York City in the 1940s, we swam in the Hudson River, and it was filled with raw sewage, okay? We swam in raw sewage, you know, to cool off. And at that time, the big fear was polio. Thousands of kids died from polio every year. But you know something? In my neighborhood, no one ever got polio. No one ever. You know why? Because we swam in raw sewage. <laughs> it strengthened our immune systems. The polio never had a prayer. We were tempered in raw shit. You notice that it's the exact same as the log flume at Triple J's King's Domination, Tallahassee, Florida. Any reason for that? Yeah, I was lazy. Based on one of my favorite George Carlin moments ever. And I tried to make buildings on the sides, and yeah, you, you're basically swimming in raw sewage. This car right here, vintage car specifically, drive like old people fuck. This scrambler is called Thanksgiving Dinner Explosion. Let's allow the proposition that somehow dead parents in heaven can help their living children. So now, according to this theory, these two people go to heaven, and they start helping their four living children, helping them with everything they need, helping them with their science projects, with their SAT scores, helping them get a good school and get a, get a nice job and get a promotion and a raise and someone to marry, and they all grow up. These four kids now grow up and have children of their own. And let's say that all four of these now grown children also die at the same time. Let's say there's an explosion at Thanksgiving dinner. But their children survive because they were seated at the children's table. Every single first aid is called health maintenance organization. When I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization or a wellness center to consult a health care delivery professional. And here's one of my favorite flat rides in the park, the super virus. If you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs, what are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs into liquid shit? I'll tell you what you're gonna do, you're gonna get sick, you're gonna die, and you're gonna deserve it because you're fucking weak and you got a fucking weak immune system. And bonus, I started working on this park when I had COVID, so... <laughs> yep. And immediately, I thought of some super virus, because that's what Americans do now. They're always willing to trade away a mask in exchange for freedom. You know how many people die in this country from some super virus every year? 600,000, you're gonna get sick, you're gonna die, 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 die. But you know something? In my neighborhood, we place the mask. No one ever got the super virus. No one ever. Place the mask over your face and breathe normally. Oh, fucking die. This is an aero steeplechase coaster with motorcycle carts. Uh, it is called biker assholes. I, I bike sometimes myself, but uh, uh, I understand it's not talking about to me. But yeah, a whole roller coaster based on those two words. I need to show the statistics wherever I go. I keep forgetting about that. It's not a very fast coaster. It doesn't really have good capacity either, but if you can get on, it uh, it's, seems like somewhat fun. This wild mouse coaster right next to the entrance plaza is called... Joe Pesci. So to get around a lot of this, I decided to worship the sun. But as I said, I don't pray to the sun. You know who I pray to? Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci came through on a couple of things that God was having trouble with. For years, I asked God to do something about my noisy neighbor with the barking dog. Joe Pesci straightened that cocksucker out with one visit. It's amazing what you can accomplish with a simple baseball bat. Yes, excellent actor and the guy that he praise to you can't even get a decent hamburger anymore they cook the shit out of everything now because everybody's afraid of joe pesci hey adventure take a fucking will you and right next to it you notice that there's a green roof over here for the train station and guess what it's called you're never going to guess what it's called thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of sodor He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. That's right. George Carr narrated seasons one through four of Thomas the Tank Engine for the U.S. 
he better watch his language while he was on that show. Continuing on with the back in town section, this is the very first Schwarzkopf Wildcat, or at least the ac first accurate Schwarzkopf Wildcat that I've ever made. Basically, this part is themed to his euphemism skit where he talks about shell shock. I don't like words that hide the truth. I don't like words that conceal reality. I don't like euphemisms. There's a condition in combat. Most people know about it. In the First World War, that condition was called shell shock. That was 70 years ago. The Second World War came along and we, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now. Takes a little longer to say. Then we had the war in Korea, 1950, and the very same combat condition was called operational exhaustion. <laughs> hey, we're up to eight syllables now. And the humanity has been squeezed completely out of the phrase. It's totally sterile now. Operational exhaustion. Sounds like something that might happen to your car. Then, of course, came the war in Vietnam. I guess it's no surprise that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen. No, so, yeah, George Carlin did not like euphemisms. Not at all. And there's a motion here right here called Tarzan Fuchs the Zebra. <laughs> hey, Steve, what time's the circle jerk start tonight? 10 o'clock. Okay, listen, I'm going to be a little bit late. You'll have to start without me. Oh, don't worry. I'll catch up. I'm eating a whole bunch of oysters and watching a horny movie. Uh, it's called Tarzan Fucks a Zebra. Russell Crowe. Well, it's kind of a fantasy. Right now, Renee Zellweger is blowing a unicorn. Man, that guy was a genius. This is a GCI roller coaster called Losing Things. This piece of material tonight is about something that most people can identify with. It's about losing things. I hate to lose anything. I don't like to lose anything because where is it? <laughs> See, that's basically the part that bothers me the most. I'm a practical guy. Where is it? I just had it. You know that feeling? It was just here. Where is it? I don't know. It's gone. That's true. It's lost. That's right. Where could it be? Could be anywhere. Not here. No, we know that. And if you go through this section, uh, underneath the airport sign, well, we're not in the airport section yet, but a good transition coaster between back in town and flying is this roller coaster, Invert Coaster by Bulgar Matbyard. And if you look over here, wow, this looks beautiful. I almost demolish this coaster once a layout was made because I thought it didn't look good, but I added these legs and thought, yeah, that completely changes everything. I love this. It's a beautiful ride. Until you realize it's called Silver Douchebag. You remember Barbara Bush? I call her the Silver Douchebag. You remember her? She is the mother of Governor George Bush. I call him Governor Bush because that's the only elected office he ever held legally in our country. Okay? George Bush, Governor Bush. I thought this was the best coaster to use Silver Douchebag with. So, there we go. It, it's amazing. Wow, look at the line for it. And here is the flying section of the park. Something else we have in common. Flying on the airlines and listening to the airlines announcements and trying to pretend to ourselves that the language they're using is really English. This is an aero suspended coaster called Boarding Process. First announcement. We would like to begin the boarding process. <laughs> Extra word, process. Not necessary. Boarding is enough. We'd like to begin the boarding. Simple, tells the story. Boarding process. Sounds important. It isn't. <laughs> it's just a bunch of people getting on an airplane. And if you notice that there's an asterisk in front of the roller coaster names, that's because I look at the coaches more than the flat rides, so that way, it's in front, so they're in the top and in alphabetical order, so I don't have to sort through these. Yeah, that's another thing that sounds more important or different than it actually is. George Carlin did not like that. Here's another Tom's a Tank Engine station and a drop tower 600 mile pro vertical dive. An oxygen mask will drop down in front of you, place the mask over your face, and breathe normally. 
Well, I have no problem with that. I always breathe normally when I'm in a 600 mile an hour uncontrolled vertical dive. I also shit normally. Right in my pants! And here, it's supposed to be an airport, specifically O'Hare International. I don't know what it actually looks like. I've never been there, but, uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's not much different than this. A bunch of shops here. And you board, well, this is themed to boarding a plane, and you go up to a roller coaster called On the Plane. About this time, someone is telling you to get on the plane. Get on the plane, get on the plane. I say, fuck you, I'm getting in the plane. In the plane. Let evil Knievel get on the plane. I'll be in here with you folks in uniform. There seems to be less wind in here. And it makes the most sense that it's called on the plane because it's a wing coaster. You sit on the ends of the wings like evil Knievel. This is my first being a wing coaster ever that I open. I originally built one for King's Domination a long time ago, but that never came to fruition. But this is my first open wing coaster, and it looks amazing. I love how it's very long and thin. I'm not sure why, it just looks cool. The only part where it goes away from the main structure is over here. It's a beautiful ride. I don't think you'll fall off, but if you do, you will float around the North Atlantic for several days. Your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. Well, imagine that. My seat cushion. Just what I need to float around the North Atlantic for several days, <laughs> clinging to a pillow full of beer farts. And uh, technically, this is in the next section of the park, but I didn't know where else to put it. Uh, although this joke could apply to any place, not just flying. This is called Rain Event. People like to sound important. Weathermen on television talk about shower activity. Sounds more important than showers. I even heard one guy on CNN talk about a rain event. <laughs> Swear to God. He said, Louisiana's expecting a rain event. I thought, holy shit, I hope I can get tickets to that. <laughs> and next to it is a huge, huge wooden coaster by the Din Corporation. It looks strikingly similar to Mean Streak at Cedar Point. <laughs> I didn't intend for it to look like Mean Streak. It just happened that way. The only difference is in... The lap before the mid-course, it goes straight, uh, whereas Mean Streak would have this turnaround before the mid-course, and it's over there rather than here, but other than that, it's basically the same. It just happened like that. This is in the rural country section of the park, possibly my favorite section of the park, Rusted World Country. Yes, well. My daddy, my daddy, yeah, my daddy. Well, you know what my daddy used to say? My daddy used to say, blah, 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 Oh, he did. Did he? Well, wasn't that fucking enlightening? My daddy used to say, fuck your daddy. Fuck your daddy in his wrinkled, rustic, rural country asshole. Grow up, Billy Joe, Carl, Bob, Danny, Frank. You're not six anymore. More like nine. What a funny name. And here is the main part of the rural country section. It's sort of divided into two subsections. This is called Mammoth's Cave, Kentucky. Did I tell you about my mom and dad? Well, my mom and dad went on vacation down to Mammoth's Cave, Kentucky. This is about six years ago, I think. And later we'll see Frog Bulls, Arkansas. There are a couple of funny rides here like Circle Jerk, Blowing Out Your Ass, and a monster truck ride, which is actually a pre-built design uh, called Mega Trucks. Any reason for that? Yeah, it was lazy. I called Nobody Takes a Fucking Walk, and my favorite ride name here is The Death of Mummy Entity. Starting with these people who think it's cute to let their children record the outgoing message. And you can't understand a word of it because the kid's a fucking imbecile. Hi, my name is Stacy. I'm five years old. My mommy and daddy aren't home. Here's my message, Stacy. I'm coming over to your house with a big knife. And I'm gonna kill mommy and daddy. Then I'm gonna peel off their skin and make a funny hat. 
and you can actually walk through the cave right here inside you will find a big rock but what you thought was a big rock is actually a giant dinosaur turd man for that being his last joke he really gave it his all so this is Mammoth Cave, Kentucky. And if you go this way, you will see a wooden coaster on your way to Frog Bulls, Arkansas. So what are you guys going to do five summers from now? <laughs> we haven't made any plans. Marge wants to go to the beach. The kids kind of like it at the lake. And I want to go to the mountains. Grandma wants to visit her sister in Frog Bulls, Arkansas. It actually looks more like the Wild West. Um... Whatever, I don't care. I'm not riding, so I don't care. Now this coaster, I built it for no other reason other than it's funny. It's a CCI wooden coaster called Men in Their 50s Named Skip. People I can do without. This is my list. Guys in their 50s named Skip. Can you imagine a man in his 50s named Skip? <laughs> I put these Wild West buildings right here to make it look like a town. Wild West has very good. Real chuckity goodness. Frogbolt's general store, Wild West style pizza. These things do not exist. Mammoth Cave has a general store too, right here. One thing I forgot to show you. You want to know a gourmet food? Toasted snail penises. <laughs> Candied moose balls. <laughs> Deep dish yak dick. And gourmet coffee. It doesn't actually exist. As well as uh, our fourth wooden coaster, right next to it, you can ride a short scoff shuttle loop called Biff Webster. There are some more people with missing chromosomes who ought to be thrown screaming from a helicopter. <laughs> Gun enthusiasts. I'm a gun enthusiast. Oh yeah, well I'm a blowjob enthusiast. Before Charlton Heston became president of these dickless lunatics in the NRA, they had a different guy. His name is Wayne LaPierre. What kind of a name for a gun nut is Wayne LaPierre? You know what this prick's name ought to be? Biff Webster. Spud Crowley, a man's name, Chuck Steak. Yeah. It actually works. It's kind of long and thin like a gun. Uh, it, it launches like a bullet from a gun. It's perfect. And there's a little bit of theming on the inside. Looks like a gun storage area. I unlocked pirates theming using the cheat. This ride is themed to the sun, which George Curran worships. This is Perkwaving Dick Fight and Balance the Budget. An amazing idea of his. Uh, which saves you a lot of money on prisons, uh, hence why this ride has a border it does. And again, on the train ride here, and it actually goes through the town. I'm not sure how this railroad track would work in real life, but uh, just seems like something that would built, be built in an old west, even though this takes place supposedly in Arkansas, but whatever. These are the only sections of the park that I still need to work on. I r kind of ran out of deals, so I made two paths, so guests don't have to walk 90% around the lake to get to from frog bulls to sports which is our next section but hopefully I can find another idea of something to put here this right here is the sports section we'll start with where you actually walk into if you came here for the first time this is a premier LIM coaster called run like a motherfucker you're not getting paid to watch and never mind lining up just grab the ball and run like a motherfucker you know <laughs> It's supposed to be an exact clone of Joker's Jinx or Poltergeist or the Flight of Fear clones, but I promise myself I will never fully memorize the layout, so Flight of Fear is always kind of a surprise for me. So I just made this, which is very heavily inspired, but it's probably a lot different. And here is the tallest and fastest ride in the park. It was originally a Giga, but I decided... Didn't blend well with the rest of the rides, which are not usually above 200 feet, so I made this just 213 feet, and that seems to work just fine. And it's a very long and exciting roller coaster, and as you can see, it was called 
moment of screaming. Why not a moment of screaming? Wouldn't that be more appropriate for dead people? Wouldn't you like to hear 60,000 fans screaming? Ah! It sure would put me in the mood for football. Chickens are decent people. Cheese doodles. Yes, I, I really like this coaster. Look how fast it goes. Wow. Here's a more sports theme area as over here. This go-kart is called 500 Miles in a Circle. And this is probably my favorite coaster in the park. Well, technically it's two coasters, but uh, it's my favorite dueling coaster in the park. <gasps> Wait a minute, there's only one. I am stupid idiot. This is themed to the very first George Carlin clip I ever saw. It was back in 8th grade. It is called Baseball versus Football. Now, baseball and football are different from one another in other kind of interesting ways, I think. First of all, um, baseball is a 19th century pastoral game. Football is a 20th century technological struggle. Baseball begins in the spring, the season of new life. <laughs> Football begins in the fall when everything is dying. <laughs> Football is played in any kind of weather. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, mud. Can't read the numbers on the field, can't read the yard markers, can't read the players' numbers. The struggle will continue. In baseball, if it rains, we don't come out to play. <laughs> I can't come out to play. They are dueling B&M hyper coasters. They actually aren't the hyper coaster term, just the model name by B&M. I just thought if there's two of them, uh, the park wouldn't want to spend too much money trying to get them built. So yeah, baseball fans and football fans will be happy to get on this coaster and compete with each other. Right here, I had to extend the baseball track a bit because it got a little bit ahead of the football track but they get together just in time for this high five element right here. Wow. Man, the, the stampede to get on the stride when it was first built, it was wild. But I don't blame the guests uh, whatsoever. This right here is a water slide ride called Women's 200 Meter Breaststroke. I uh, was watching ESPN today, for which I am thankful, by the way, all sorts of strange things they show on ESPN. Today they had some swimming that was interesting, the women's 200 meter breaststroke. Well, I'd never have seen a woman with 200 meter breasts. So I was really interested. Even though he doesn't count swimming as a sport, I just, I just included it in the sports theme section of the park just because uh, I wouldn't know what to do otherwise. There's one more coaster I need to show you. This is a fight record called All 45 Guys Play at Once, which is a rule change he would suggest in football. I'm enough of a sports fan that I suggest I have some rules changes I would like to suggest. I think there are some changes we could make in certain sports that would make them more exciting, you know? Like in football, I would let all 45 guys play at the same time. <laughs> you know, what's this shit standing around watching the game? One more thing for baseball, out in the outfield, I would have a series of randomly placed landmines. There's Marshall settling under that ball. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes, this is a very good intimate blitz coaster. I like it more than Manning Worm at Triple J World. It starts with you running uh, the bases and you get to third base, but boom! And there you go. My favorite aspect of this ride is that it has a Pantheon style spike. Oh, oh. Yeah, that, that's very cool. My first element of its kind. If you like to know how to make one of these in this game, I will link down below a video by Cody Watkins, one of my favorite RCT YouTubers, and he will show you how to make a Pantheon style spike. Oh, oh! And this coaster has many colors, so red is supposed to represent the randomly placed landmines, 
white just because it's football and green for when you're trying to get back into the stadium and I really like this stadium that I made. It's probably uh probably doesn't look like a very realistic stadium, but I'm not sure how it would actually look. I'm not uh a sports guy at all. But look at all the guests watching. Ooh. So this is George Carnland. You may have noticed that there is no kids area of this park because well, I think you know the reason for that. Something else I'm getting tired of is all this stupid shit we have to listen to all the time about chill -ish. It's all you hear in this bullshit country. chill -ish. What about the chill -ish? You know what I say? Fuck, 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 fuck. They're getting entirely too much bullshit. And I know what you're thinking. You say, Jesus, he's not going to attack children, is he? Fuck you. Your children are overrated and overvalued. You've turned them into little bullshit objects. You have a child fetish, and it's bullshit. There are a couple of things about kids you have to remember. First of all, they're not all cute, okay? In fact, if you look at them close, some of them are rather bullshit. Did I go through all the roller coasters? I believe I did. And right here, I'm thinking about uh, making an area theme to being by the shore. The best part about living on the seashore is that you only have assholes on three sides of you. But right here, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly. We'll just have to find out. So, that's it for George Carnan Land, owned by the Triple J Parks Company. And I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at this park, and I hope you have a very good day. Right on! Baseball, football, baseball, 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 football, baseball, football, football, baseball, football, baseball, football, baseball, football, baseball, football, baseball, football, baseball, baseball, football, 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 baseball,